Here are instructions for your diet analysis project. Whether you're using an access code that was provided to you or you are going to be using a program that's been installed on a computer, the following instructions should be helpful. If you have questions, please be sure to see me. This is the diet and activity collection form. Basically, we're looking at intake on the left and expenditure on the right. On the left, you will write down your food and the quantity of food that you're consuming. You'll have one of these for each of the three days of the project. Be as specific as possible, especially when it comes to things like quantities of food. Instead of a handful or some, go back and look at the tools that we have reviewed in class, whether it's the size of your palm is three ounces, whether the knuckle of your thumb is a tablespoon, do the best you can to determine portion sizes. This analysis program has combination foods, so if you have a sub from Subway, you don't need to divide it into its component parts because the entire food item will be in the program itself. The right side of the form is your expenditure, and what I'm asking you to write down is basically what you do for activity. If you don't do anything, just sleep, study, eat, well, you probably wouldn't fill very much of this in. And when it comes to determining your physical activity factor, you would be sedentary. But if you're extremely active, and you'll see this in a few minutes, and you choose the factor for the highest level of activity, I want to be able to go back and look at this form and see that you are indeed incredibly active. Once you have collected your data over a three-day period, and what I'm asking you to do is two weekdays and one weekend day, because, I don't know, sometimes people eat differently on the weekend, and maybe you're one of them. Then you'll go into the program and create a profile, because you have an opportunity to put in a lot more information than what I'm asking for, and you'll track your diet. You will generate a report, and then after you've generated that report, you will click on Intake spreadsheet and export that spreadsheet to your desktop. I'm going to show you in a second all the information that this program provides you and then I will show you what I am interested in this semester. And please only hand in the information that I'm looking for. Here's an example of all the information that's provided for on this spreadsheet. I just kind of wrote in cake, cheese, and pizza because it was the first thing that came to my mind. So you have the item, the meal, the quantity. I do not need to know the weight. And you can see all these other nutrients. Proteins, carbohydrates, fats, unsaturated fats, trans fats. Now while I'm not asking you to turn in trans fats as part of the information I want submitted, you are going to be asked a question about how much trans fats you get in your diet. So you may want to refer back to this information. But you can see there are, God, what, like 25 different pieces of information of which I'm only asking for this. This is form one. If you choose not to use the diet analysis project, then you'll need to hand in three of these forms, one for each day in which you're collecting data. Some people have mobile apps that they like to use to collect or keep track of what they eat. Other people have programs on their computers. I've also given you a couple of resources that you might want to use. And please make sure that you type your information into each column. Formatting is extremely important. If you have any problems with keeping all this information in this format on one page, please come see me and I can help you with that. Across the top, you will see the nutrients that we're looking for, the food item, the amount, and the different vitamins, minerals, and macronutrients, as well as calories. After you've completed this form, then you will take that number and for each day, put it in form two. Put day one, day two, day three, and you'll take that total, divide it by three to give you an average for the three days. You'll take this number and put it in this row on form three. You'll then take information provided on a document called references, which I'll also show you in a moment. These are the standards against which you will compare your intake to determine 
whether or not you've met the recommendation, whether you're deficient, whether you've exceeded, and by how much. Did you get 100% of the recommendation for vitamin C? How much iron are you getting? If you consumed 500% of the recommendation for sodium, well, when you do the analysis questions, you'll be asked to figure out where the food sources came from. And this is the reference value form that you can use. These are the nutrients on the left, and these are the values that you'll be using. For vitamin A, the diet analysis program lists both retinol equivalents and international units. What I want you to use are the, hmm, I don't know what an RAI is, but I believe that's supposed to be the retinol equivalent. So please be sure to choose that number from the diet analysis program. And for those of you that choose not to use the program, then I ask you to do the calculations to convert your international units to what I'm looking for. This may be why using the diet analysis program makes calculations much easier. Now, assuming I've just encouraged all of you to use the diet analysis program, this is the format for form one. You can delete all the columns that aren't necessary and hand in something that looks like this. And this is not what you want to hand in. Hand it in the entire printout not a good idea. Or you will use to calculate your percent calories from proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. If you consume an alcoholic beverage, you need to include that information as well. And you can get that from the Diet Analysis Project. Otherwise, you need to use the information on the next form, which I'll show you in a second. But let me point out that sometimes your total calories may be greater or less than 100%. If it's plus or minus 2 to 3%, that's fine. If it's much greater than that, you need to go back and look at Form 1 and see if there were some errors. If you're not using the dialysis form and you are consuming alcohol, then you would use this worksheet to help you determine your calories from alcohol. If you don't drink alcohol, you don't need to do any calculations based on alcohol. You do, however, need to answer the questions at the end of the project. Once you've determined your intake, you then work on determining your expenditure. First, you'll calculate your basal metabolic rate using these formulas here. This is one formula known as the Harris-Benedict equation. Females use a different formula than males, so make sure you put your information in the right row. And second, you'll determine your activity level. This is where you can go back and look at those first forms and determine whether you are sedentary, lightly active, moderately active, or very active. Third, you will determine your total calorie requirements by taking the above information and adding what's called the TEF, or thermic effect of food. This is the amount of calories required to digest, absorb, and metabolize food. You will add those three numbers together, and that will give you your total calorie requirements. Once you've completed all those calculations, you'll then use that information in this discussion section. I've just put in the first couple of questions. There are about 30 questions, but as you have a look at, as you go through this form, you'll see sometimes it's just a one word or a one number answer, and that's all you need to do is put in one word or one number. You need to make sure you include your questions with the write up. What a lot of people do is simply save these forms to their laptop and then just answer the questions one at a time. 